one day i'm going to admit that buying books is my coping mechanism um but i don't think that day is gonna be today because that's none of y'all's business and i don't have time for y'all and my therapist to be like you need to find a better way to cope with your emotions and not buy all of these books and blah, 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 blah. I ain't got time for that. But today is not going to be that day. I won't admit that. <laughs> Hi, friends. Welcome back to Shelby and the Book Club. I am Shelby Monet. And in today's video, we are going to do a book haul. Some of these books you guys have probably seen if you are following me on TikTok and Instagram, which you should be in like small um, little book hauls that I've been posting. Um, but I decided to just add some of them in a pile and talk about them today. So if you'd like to hear it, here you go. First, we have a book that I already have a hard copy of. It is Sing I'm Very Sing by Jasmine Ward. If you have not read anything by Jasmine Ward, I really advise that you do. Um, she is phenomenal um in so many ways so this one um it says part ghost story part road novel this historic national book award winner is a dazzling journey through mississippi's past and present in an epic tale of hope and survival following a family making a trip from their gulf coast town to the mississippi state penitentiary sing i'm buried sing tests the strength of emotional bonds and the pull of their collective history in a haunted landscape for a family reeling from loss the trip is fraught with danger her writing style um the best way that i can describe jasmine ward to me is she is a transporter she will transport you right to where she wants you to be every word every feeling every place it is very amazing um when i first started reading again like avidly three years ago now um she was one of the first books authors that were new to me that I picked up and I feel like I can call her a favorite because I've read most of her work but this one and I started this one I just didn't finish it um because I don't know why I didn't finish it at the time not because it was bad though um next we have moonrise over new jessup you ever be like haunted by a book um i feel like things call out to me um and this is one of those books that has been calling out to me and i was ignoring it because i just the cover just was i was like what and watch this end up being a favorite book of the year so it says it's 1957 and after leaving the only home she has ever known alice young steps off the bus into all black new jessup where residents have largely rejected inter integration as the means for black social advancement instead they seek no they seek to maintain and fortify the community they cherish in on their side of the woods um in this place alice falls in love with raymond campbell whose clandestine i probably said that wrong organizing activities challenge new jessup's long-standing status quo and could lead to the young couple's expulsion or worse from the home they um both hold dear this sounds really interesting um one of the blurbs says moonrise over new jessup is a fresh gripping civil rights era story told with the bever and told with bever and tenderness i probably said that wrong too jamila Minix propulsive prose had me flying through these pages a terrific debut um so i'm excited to read it um because i finally picked it up next on the list we have decent people by um deshaun charles charles winslow i'm actually currently reading in west mills by him which i'm thoroughly enjoying um this one says in still segregated in the still segregated town of West Mills, North Carolina in 1976, Marion, Marva, and Lazarus Harmon are found shot to death in their homes. The people of West Mills on both sides of that canal served as the town's color line. Are in a frenzy to f a finger pointing gossip and wonder. 
I love me a mystery. Um, I'm also enjoying his writing style in, in West Mills, which is something else that I recently got. Um, I'll show it to you real quick in West Mills. Um, when I tell you the main character in this one, she has told everybody that she has encountered to go to hell. Um, her name is Azalea Sinner. Um, and she is a fierce woman. This is not on the back of the book, but she is a fierce woman that has a bit of a drinking problem. And she turns up pregnant and, um, she turns to a friend to help her. But while he's busy trying to fix her life um he finds himself powerless to repair the many troubles within his own family as the long buried secrets of his troubled past begin to come to light um this is also all of these books are up on the site if you are interested in them um next some of these y'all are gonna see wink wink in my um february tbr um so just act like you ain't seen them before this is black cloud rising i um wanted this book because it is a historical fiction but it's a historical fiction about the war um and so here it says by fall of 1863 union forces had taken control of tidewater virginia and established a toehold in eastern north carolina including along the outer banks Thousands of freed slaves and runaways flooded the Union lines, but Confederate irregulars still roamed the region. In December, the newly formed African Brigade, a unit of these former slaves led by General Edward Augustus Wilde, a one-armed and passionate um, abolitionist, set out from Portsmouth to hunt down the rebel guerrillas and extinguish the threat. I thought that sounds super super good and after reading what did I just read that was about um the war oh I started the threat collectors um and that was about the war I did not finish that one um but I was loving the aspects about the war so this this sounds really good um so i want to read that next because we know that i love some historical fiction we have in the upper country by kai um thomas um this is written by a man he is an afro-canadian born in ottawa descended from trinidad and the british isles which I thought was really cool. Um, but it says in the 1800s in Dunmore, a Canadian town settled by people fleeing enslavement in the American South, young Lucinda Martin works for a crusading black journalist. One night a slave hum hunter is shot dead by, by an old woman who recently arrived. When the old woman refused to for free, flee, Lucinda is taxed with gathering testimony before she can be condemned for the crime but the old woman doesn't want to simply confess instead she proposes a barter a story for a story she begins an extraordinary exchange that reveals a tapestry of interwoven histories challenges Lucinda's notions of her past and suggests that the old woman may carry a secret that could reshape her destiny traveling along the path of the underground railroad from Virginia to Michigan from the indigenous nations around the Great Lakes to the refugee communities of Canada and the upper country weaves together unlikely stories of love, survival, and familial upheaval that map the interconnected history of the peoples of North America in an entirely new and resonant way. I cannot wait to read this. I've been holding off <laughs> um, because I feel like it is gonna be a book that I'm going to fly through um, I love the idea um, that this takes place in Canada, that we are going to get stories about people that fled to Canada because I feel like we don't really talk about that, whether it be in historical fiction or historical nonfiction. Um, so I'm super excited about this. I can't wait to read this. It'll probably be the very first thing that I read in February. Um, next, we have Wade in the Water. 
um every time i look at this book i do sing the hymn um this is by nayani nekruma i believe that's how that's pronounced forgive me if i am butchering her name i don't mean to um she is a black woman she is beautiful by the way um born in boston raised in ghana and zimbabwe which i think is really cool very very cool um so this one says resonant with the emotional urgency of alice walker's classic meridian and the poignant charm of sue monk kids the secret life of bees wade in the water tells the story of an unforgettable summer in 1982 seen largely through the eyes of ella a young mistreated black 11 year old girl who lives with leroy who resents her and ma who cannot stand to look at her ella's world has changed when Catherine st james a mysterious white researcher from princeton arrives in their racially divided mississippi town the community is immediately suspicious what does Catherine want and why is she really there as tensions mount and rumors swirl the tide swings against her ella and Kath Catherine are drawn into a complicated friendship that silences the outside world until it doesn't soon the relationship grows increasingly fraught as ella unwittingly pushes against Catherine's carefully constructed boundaries that guard a complicated past with secrets that could have devastating consequences. Told in the lyrical voices of both Ella and Catherine St. James, this moving coming of age story replete with heartache and love, cruelty and laughter is an exquisite and explosive novel that will keep you spellbound until the last page. I bet you um, Miss St. James is actually a black woman. I bet you. How much you want to bet? um how much you want to be her daddy or something or or in anyway um next on the list before i let you go okay i'm always singing before i let go by kennedy ryan y'all know i am not a um romance girly y'all know that i am not y'all know that um, but people have talked so much about this that I just have to read it. Um, so it says their love was supposed to last forever, but when life delivered blow after devastating blow, Yasmin and Josiah Wade found that love alone couldn't solve or save anything, everything. That is a fact. Okay? Love ain't gonna, love ain't gonna hold you down the way that you think it is. I believe that like does that i do a lot for somebody i like love don't mean nothing well it means something but you get what i'm trying to say um it couldn't save their marriage jasmine wasn't prepared for how her life fell apart but she's finally starting to find joy again she and josiah have found a new rhythm co-parenting their two kids and running a thriving business together yet like magic magnets they're always drawn back to each other and now they're beginning to wonder if they're truly ready to let go of everything they once had soon one stolen kiss leads to another and then more it's hot it's illicit it's all good until old wounds reopen is it too late for them to find forever could they even be better second time around just the way that i'm smiling at that i know that i'm going to thoroughly enjoy that book since um we talking about that was from book of the month well i'll show you the other two book of the month books that i got um age of vice which i was not anticipating being this big i ain't even gonna hold you um this one is a thriller so it says new delhi excuse me 3 a.m a speeding mercedes jumps the curb and in the blink of an eye five people are dead it's a rich man's car but when the dust settles there's no rich man at all just a shell-shocked servant who cannot explain the strange series of events that led to this crime nor can he foresee the dark drama that is about to unfold sounds good i've heard good things about it um gunner might be coming leave alone baby go ahead sit you can sit right there you can sit right here hi handsome you can sit you can sit right here. Okay. 
Okay, and then last but certainly not least, I got Independence, which is the story of three sisters. It says, in a village in uh, Bengal, live three sisters, daughters as well, of a well-respected doctor, Priya intelligent and idealistic, resolved to follow in her father's footsteps and become a doctor through though society frowns on it Deepa the beauty determined to make <laughs> a marriage that will bring her family joy and status and Jemini devout sharp eyed and a talented quilt maker with deeper passions than she reveals theirs is a home of love and safety um set during the partition of British India in 1947 a time of both immense gain and heartaching loss. Award-winning author Shitra Banerjee Diva Karuni's novel brings the life brings life to a sweeping story of three sisters caught up in events beyond their control, their unbreakable bond, and their incredible struggle against powerful odds. It's one of them tiny books, and y'all know how I feel about tiny books they will get you together um and then last but certainly not least we have one more from the Ardbark book club which is another book subscription that i'm a part of where i keep saying this the name of this book wrong um how to turn into a bird by maria jose ferrada um this says from the award-winning author of how to order the universe maria jose ferrada beautifully details the life and lessons of an unconventional man and the boy who loves him in santiago chile or chile 12 year old miguel is enchanted by his uncle ramon's unusual job to take care of a coca-cola billboard by the highway and his even more peculiar decision to make the billboard his new home as he visits his uncle in his perch above it all Miguel wonders if his uncle has lost his mind <laughs> as everyone in the neighborhood says or is Ramon the only one who can see things as they really are I think this is sweet but again another little small book that will probably get me together and probably have me sobbing so those are just some of the new books that I have recent, recently purchased if you want to get any of them they are all available at shelbyinthebookstore.com i thank you and appreciate you for all your support and love and the nice comments even the rude comments i'm appreciative for those ones too um and if no one has told you today i love you if you have made it to the end of this this video put the little um the book stack emoji okay love you bye